Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so uh, in number theory proofs part one, uh, we used an indirect proof to show that the square root of two is irrational. And in this video, we're again gonna use an indirect proof, but to show something much cooler, which is that there are infinitely many prime numbers. Now, since we're using an indirect proof, we uh, suppose that the primes were finite. That is, we assume that we had finitely many prime numbers. Um, and if so, we can list them, right? And we can list them by starting with the smallest one, p sub one being two, and then the next one being three, and then p sub three, the third one being five, p sub four, the fourth one being seven, and then p sub five, the fifth one being nine, right? Nope, I'm just kidding. Uh, p sub five would have to be 11. Nine is not a prime, remember. But yeah, we continue in this manner, and somewhere down the line, we will be able to write the last of them, p sub n, and let's call it a. But the um, primes are finite in our assumption, so the list must end somewhere. Okay, it's ended here. Now, what we're going to do is come up with a natural number n uh, that's made in the following way, which is we make um, the natural number n by taking all of the primes we listed, p1 through pn, and multiplying them together, and then adding 1. Um, and notice then that uh, this number n is not divisible by any of the primes we listed. And also notice that uh, the way we've written n is a very good way to come up with new primes. For example, like um, if you multiply p1 and p2 and add 1, then you get 2 times 3 plus 1, which is 7. And if instead you multiplied p1, p2, p3, p4 and added 1, well, the product of p1 through p4 is 210 plus 1 is 211. So that's a prime number, and I would not have known it was prime unless I did this, right? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Anyway, yeah, uh, this number n uh, will not be divisible by any of the primes p1 through pn. For example, uh, in the case of 211, uh, which we made by multiplying p1 through p4 and then adding 1, 211 is not divisible by 2, 3, 5, or 7. So uh, this number n is not divisible by any of the primes p1 through pn. And I'm saying like p sub 1 through p sub n. I should be saying sub instead of just pn, but you get it, you get it. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so I'm just um, writing down what I just said, which is that none of the primes p1 through pn divides n. All right, but we know that every natural number n can be uh, factored as a product of primes, right? We know that if given any natural number n, we can write it as a product of primes. And maybe those primes have like powers to them. Like, for example, like uh, in the case of 50, it's 2 times 5 squared. But still, we have to be able to write it as a product of primes that are unique uh, to a power, right? So every number can be written as a distinct product of primes. Uh, and that that distinctness or uniqueness is based upon like the exponent. For example, if you take the prime factorization of like 150, they both involve the primes 2 and 5, but 100 is 2 squared times 5 squared, whereas 50 is just 2 to the first times 5 squared. So that, that exponent on the primes will play to the uniqueness of this factorization, but the point is, keep it simple, every number n can be written as a product of primes, right? Okay, cool. So then there must be some uh, prime number p sub k that divides this number n. We said that none of the primes p1 through pn divide this number n, but there must be some prime number p sub k which divides n. And notice that uh, this number, this prime number p sub k, uh, is a new number different from any of the ones we listed, right? Because uh, while p sub k divides n, we know that none of the ones we listed divide n, so this uh, prime p sub k must be a different prime. But also, it's bigger than all of them, because uh, we wrote p1, p2, p3, all the way through pn in order, from the smallest to the biggest, and we just found one that's not in that list, and therefore this one must be something bigger than all of them. The smallest is 2, we know, and we've written everything in between all the way to the largest, which is a. But um, this p sub k, uh, which is a new prime, is not in that list and therefore is different and bigger than all of them. So uh, we're done because this means that uh, we've just discovered a new prime and so the primes are not finite. That is, the primes are infinite. Yeah? Okay, cool. All right, take care.